Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this latest weather briefing. We have a heat wave in store. I know it's early April, but Santa Ana winds are going to kick in and a classic dome of hot air is going to settle over Southern California. For unusually hot temperatures and even some record highs coming up for the second half of the week. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. It's really dry across the region, but thankfully late March we saw widespread rain. So currently conditions are moist, but we do expect things to really dry up back down to much below average levels or even record levels. This is a measure of the dead fuel moisture across our mountains and foothills. Now the live fuel moisture, as you'd notice, is green across much of the region. However, uh, we haven't had a lot of precipitation and it's been below average everywhere. So even our live fuel moisture or our green up is stressed. So the hot temperatures and dry air will bring us elevated fire weather conditions. So what that means is if there is a start, some of the fires will burn fairly well, but we don't expect significant large fires. Speaking of being dry, it was very dry January, February, record dry. In fact, all the way through March, since the start of the new year, California's received less than a quarter, less than 25% of precipitation compared to normal. The snowpack has gone from a staggering 160% of average on January 1st, now down to 38% of average statewide, a third of where it should be. There are a few exceptions. San Diego County with this weather pattern has been wetter than most areas, but still below average. January through March stacks up like this, driest on record in the dark red shaded areas. That's about half of California, all of central and northern California. More snow has fallen on Mount Laguna in San Diego County than Mammoth in central California since January 1st. If you rank it, since January 1st, most of Central Northern California is the driest on record. Southern California in the single digits, like the LA Basin, San Diego, like I said, we have locked out in this weather pattern and we've been wetter than most places, but still dry and below average. The Sierra Nevada, where a lot of precipitation goes into water supply, is about 74% of where it should be. So this is rain and snow. The snowpack, however, much less than that. So there's not a lot of snow to go in and make up for the lack of precipitation is the bottom line. Despite starting off very wet in December, in fact, we were on pace to be one of the wettest years on record. By the way, the wettest year on record for the Sierra Nevada, La Nina, as shown in the green line. What was the weather pattern that did this? Well, back in December, a very anomalous weather pattern, meaning an unusual block in the Pacific, drove storms to the north, brought down cold air, but it was shifted far enough west to tap into tropical moisture for three atmospheric rivers into Southern California. Now, since January 1, that block, that anomaly, that big dome of warm air that brings us heat waves has shifted over Northern California and we are just getting the back edge of most of these storms. Because of that position, uh, San Diego County has done better. But a dramatic change in California, despite just a slight shift in the weather pattern. Since October 1st, the start of the water year, most of California is in the orange and red. That is less than 75% of average. Now, this includes... The atmospheric river of late October, which set records in itself, and then the record snowfall precipitation in Tahoe in December. Temperatures have been mild too with the lack of precipitation, especially in our mountains. Significant early snow melt this spring. Key points. Record high temperatures, 15 to 25 degrees above average. Records look like they're in jeopardy for the coast and valleys. Santa Ana winds. Wednesday through Friday morning. They're going to be strongest on Thursday. 
It's going to be much cooler on the coast Saturday. Low clouds and marine air filtering in, and that'll spread inland on Sunday. A cold storm with increasing west winds, so opposite of Santa Ana wind, starting Sunday with the strongest winds on Monday and Tuesday. And looks like we might get some showers and even some mountain snow. That's how cold the storm is for early next week. We're talking record highs. Here's some of the record highs that are in jeopardy. Take a look at your climate location. Compare the record high and the forecast high. Temperatures expected in the hottest locations to get right near 100. What's the weather pattern that's going to bring this heat wave in Santa Ana wind? Storm track to our north, but it goes so far north it buckles and brings a big dome of high pressure, warm air, jet stream, airplane level right over Southern California starting Wednesday. It buckles even further, pumping all that warm air right over all of California. At the same time, underneath it, a surface high pressure or the cold air over the Rockies from their storm and their snow, that cold, dense high pressure will set up the gradient, the pressure difference to bring the Santa Ana winds. And those Santa Ana winds blow from the Great Basin down to Southern California, strongest on Thursday. Now, this pattern is short-lived, and starting Sunday, it breaks down rapidly with that onshore flow and marine air. Sunday's still hot in the deserts, but that cold air will be rushing in as the storm comes down from the north, as shown here, and almost right on top of us by early next week, Monday and Tuesday. It'll bring much colder temperatures below average, and the precipitation. Here's a little bit of detail of the winds. The winds will pick up. Uh, Wednesday late morning, it'll look like this with offshore flow, strongest winds in the mountain passes. Those winds will hold and continue in the mountain passes, reach Orange County by later on Wednesday and Wednesday night, all the way to the coast. Then on Thursday morning, they'll start to spread into northern San Diego County, eventually all the way to the coast everywhere with even light winds and a little bit of offshore wind down to San Diego. Strongest winds in the mountains and passes, but we'll see gusts 40, 50 miles per hour. Santa Ana wind. Now by Friday, we'll lose a lot of the wind. So Friday will be a light wind day, but in the morning we'll still feel an offshore flow, a Santa Ana wind as you wake up Friday morning and it will heat up fast. Here's a look at the locations that will be the windiest offshore flow. So the areas in the yellow gust 40 to 50 miles per hour. Be sure to check out our new graphical hazard weather outlook on our webpage as shown here. All right, let's take a look at the temperatures here real quick. Starting with Wednesday, it heats up, gets in the 90s across all the inland valleys. Remember, the Santa Ana wind begins, so a lot of our valleys are the same as the desert. Santa Ana wind kicks up in strongest on Thursday, so now the coast and the valleys are hotter than even the deserts, as shown here. Now on Friday, we start to lose that Santa Ana winds and the winds become light, so the hottest areas shift now to the inland valleys around 100 and the deserts around 100. And notice the immediate coast, like the beach, starts to cool, but even with the light winds and lack of sea breeze, it's well in the 90s to near 100 on the coast Friday. Saturday's the big change along the coast and even in the inland valleys with a quickly developing sea breeze. But note the deserts remain hot, protected from that sea breeze through Saturday, around 100 again. Very low humidity. This is a Santa Ana wind, so it's blowing across the deserts. And humidity on Thursday and Friday, single digit across all inland areas, deserts, valleys, mountains. Very dry air in addition to being very warm. And that's also why we talk about an elevated fire risk. Here's a summary. Hot temperatures everywhere between 90 and 102. You have to go up into the mountains to escape that heat. 15 to 25 degrees above April averages. So we have heat risk. Gusty Santa Ana winds, it's blowing from the desert behind all that cold air that's moving through the Northern Rockies. So we'll see wind gusts, at the windiest area, 60 miles per hour, most places 40 to 50. 
Now for where you live in the coastal cities, 10 to 30 miles per hour. Cooler on Saturday, notably cooler on Saturday for the coast and even in the valleys. That'll spread inland rapidly for Sunday, Monday. And don't forget the marine air and low clouds that spreads in starting Saturday. Increasing west onshore flow with a new storm system coming off the Pacific. Down from the north, that brings a chance of showers and even some mountain snow showers early next week, sometime late Monday into Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Stay safe and stay hydrated during these heat risk situations coming up this week.